All right, here we go. Certainly always my favorite part of our Sunday newscast. He has been called a loose cannon and a maverick. He showed up the candidates at the first Democratic presidential debate by saying what most politicians won't say, sometimes think, but won't say. He rails against the military-industrial complex, wants to get rid of your income tax, uh, and just wait till you hear what else he has to say about Iraq. Live in our Sunday Spotlight tonight, former Senator and Democratic presidential contender Mike Gravel. Senator, thanks so much for being with us, sir. Thank you for having me. Rick. You know, to a certain extent, you remind me of that Howard Beale character in the movie <laughs> Network who says, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Do you see the resemblance? I sure do, and I think all Americans are mad as hell right now because we're not getting out of Iraq. They put out the word last November that they want us out, and the Congress is sort of diddling around. Do you, th do you think it's a mismanagement issue, or just or was it wrong from uh, Jump Street? Well, first off, the, the war was wrong and was lost the moment we went in. This is a fraudulent war sold to the American people. But, uh, you know, it can change right now if the Democratic leadership would do something about it. On Monday, I released a, a bill and a tactic to have the war ended by uh, September and uh, have our troops home by Christmas and it's got no fly at all with respect uh, to what's going on in Congress. You, so you say pull the troops out and pull them out as soon as we can get them out of there? Yes, 120 days, that's what it would take. Alright, so, but you pull the troops out, suddenly Iran comes in uh, from uh, the top part of the country, then the Syrians go in per perhaps to defend the Sunnis because you know that there's going to be a Shia takeover. There could be a lot of bloodletting, even more than what's going on now. The Kurds might come in from the other side as well. These things are all possibilities. Are you concerned about it? Uh, no, I'm not. There are possibilities, but, they, but then again, it's like uh, Vietnam. The possibilities were that the, all the dominoes were going to fall, and of course, nothing like that happened. And I don't think that will happen in Iraq. We've, we've got a civil war going on right now, and the way to end it is for us to get out of it and then use our diplomatic efforts to end the civil war. And Iran, uh, Syria, Saudi Arabia, they all got a stake in having stability in Iraq, and so they'll help. They won't help now as long as we're there with our troops. You don't think it'll destabilize the region? Let me ask you a question. Why are we in Iraq? We're in Iraq for oil. That's what George Bush wants to get control over. And when you hear the Democratic candidates and Republican candidates, for that matter, saying, oh, we'll pull out our combat troops. What really they're saying is that we're going to stay there with over 100,000 American soldiers and we're going to try to continue to control that oil. And that is what's wrong. Oil in Iraq is not worth one ounce of American blood. But, but nobody ever said anything about oil when we went to Iraq. And most of the American people, including us in the news media, bought into some of the theories we had at the time. And now we're left with the fact that we got rid of Saddam Hussein and also that we're heading toward the Wolfowitz theory. Uh, in the future, we're going to need to stabilize Iraq one way or another if we want to have that region stabilized. You buy it? Nope, not at all. Uh, th that region will stabilize itself if we stop being so warlike. And I think one of the things we could do is to try to bring about peace between the Palestinians and Israelis. That essentially would, would help defang the entire confrontation of the Islamic world with the West. Well, if we do that, what would we have to do? Do we have to pull the harness on Israel since we're, we're the ones who've been backing them for so long? Well, for the first thing we ought to do is we ought to bring the moderates together, build a cocoon, arrive at the, trans the deal, which everybody knows it's going to be 69, uh, the, the 69 boundaries, uh, 67 boundaries rather, mm -hmm. uh, with some tweaking. But once that is done and arrived at, then you have the Israeli people, the citizens, and the Palestinian citizens vote on it, not just make it a transaction between the leaders of the world, of these two countries, or the United States. Let me ask you a question. I'm thinking about this as I'm listening to you talk about the Palestinian issue. Do you think if the United States had taken the $350 billion that we spent in Iraq and we would have spent it on the Palestinian issue, even buying each one of them a house or whatever it would have taken to somehow bring those two together, do you think that would have been much more well spent? Very much so. In fact, Rick, that's part of the plan that I would hope to bring about, is we have to bring the economic level of the Palestinians to the same level as the Israelis. Then everybody will have a stake in peace. So, so that's what I'm hearing you say. You're saying the money that we spend on, because you, you rail against the military-industrial complex. Eh? You're an Eisenhower guy, right? Correct. Well, you're saying that we need to spend less money on military and more money than on what? 
on, on aggressive diplomacy, on dealing with many of the infrastructural problems we have here at home with respect to education, health care. The, the treasure that we're spending to try and get control of Iraqi oil is like trying to get control of the Titanic. We need to move in a different direction with respect to energy, have a global institution, put on a, a carbon tax, hmm. invite other countries to do the same, and then try to take this wealth and, and bring in together the world's scientific and engineering community my, to get us off of carbon in a decade. My producer's telling me we're down to a minute. I want to get to a couple of other issues. Uh, why don't we go to, you want to legalize drugs? Of course we do. Stop and think. Marijuana is not a problem, not any more than taking a fifth of booze. And, but, but what we need with harder drugs, we need to legalize the regulation thereof. We're spending $60, $70 billion a year on a war on drugs, and it's about a, been as effective as the, we've had with respect to prohibition. We have to stop the prohibition of marijuana. You also want to get rid of the federal income tax. What do you want to do? I understand that you want to do a national sales tax instead. Correct. It's a fair tax that would have that would take care of the poor and could be made very progressive it's fair tax the reason why the word fair is that our present tax system is not fair the burden is carried by the average american wealth has gained the system it's probably the most corrupt corrupt form of taxation taxation we could devise let me ask you this a lot of people are saying that you are getting in the way of the real candidates in these <laughs> debates how do you respond to that i am a real candidate in this debate and i think americans will buy into that when they really understand americans want to hear the truth they're fed up with the partisanship they're fed up with politics as usual and that of course is not what i represent in the slightest you're in to stay where are you getting your money by the way <laughs> well i hope some of it's coming from you rick <laughs> 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 Anybody that hears my voice and they want to help, all they got to do is go to gravel08.us and I would really appreciate any financial support anybody's prepared to give. All right. Well, we thank you, sir. Uh, former Senator uh, Mike Gravel of Alaska, we thank you for being with us. It's certainly a, pl a pleasure to talk to you. You're a character, I'll tell you that. Well, thank you, Rick. <laughs> Be sure to show, join us for our uh, presidential debates live right. from the battleground. And you'll see it, of course, right here on CNN.